G'day viewers and welcome to another episode of PB's Retro Restorations. This week we've got a car that's special to me, it belonged to my Uncle Philip. Uh, my Uncle Philip had a massive collection of Corgi and Dinky and Lesney cars. Uh, Mum would always make him let me play with them when I was a kid in the 70s and 80s, which I'm not sure he always wanted me to do, but he always let me do it and I suspect that half of them are in con the condition they are because of me. So. What better way to make up for it than see if we can fix this one? The gear featured on the front page of the 1965 catalogue. and They also featured it inside as one of the exciting new models with lots of features. Here's a picture of me and Uncle Phil. Uncle Phil's probably telling me if I break his cars he's going to drop me on my head or something. I don't know. You may have wondered at the start that thought this car didn't look so bad, but uh, let me show you something. The whole roof snapped off. Now this car has been like this since I've, as long as I could ever remember it had the roof snapped off it and somebody, probably Grandad or Uncle Phil, tried gluing the glass back in and fixing it. It's missing a bucket. It's got the little corgi dog that somehow five year old me didn't pull out and lose. Now you might be sitting there in your easy chair wondering, well oh, geez PB, well that's stuffed, what can you do about that? And I thought the same, and to be honest, it's not an exactly hard to find model, um, but it was one of Uncle Phil's and I wanted to try and fix it because I wasn't going to get rid of it. So, and if you look closely, the pillars aren't actually broken off. Uh, the worst one's this one and it's just bent under. So I think if we can tease it back out, straighten them up, uh, and get it stuck back together, I think we can fix this one. Now the original way this model worked was you push the front wheels up and it would lift the bonnet just enough so you could grab it and open it. But as you can see, the front suspension's broke and something's come adrift inside. Rear suspension's okay. Boot and all the other doors, the door inserts and everything are even still here. We're going to have to find a replacement bumper. They do make it, but more about that story later. Uh, and we're gonna have to find another bucket. We've got some replacement glass coming for it. So as always, let's get it apart and get moving. Now this rear one, it's very shallow. I'm gonna center punch it first. There's not gonna be any chance of drilling or it's like tapping this one out. Um, so I'm not sure how we're going to get it back together. We might have to resort to glue, which I don't really want to do. But um, getting it done without bending what's left of the pillars off is also going to be a challenge. So wish me luck. Now we've got that apart. I can, all the doors and everything fell out then, but it wasn't quite finished fighting me. That rear rivet, despite being as shallow as it is, uh, still didn't want to come adrift, so we turn to the Dremel. Uh, and there we go, finally comes apart. Let's see what we got. As you can see, the front suspension has this big crack through it. It's supposed to sit flat like this with some tension in it so when the wheels go they push it up but it doesn't i'm not sure how we're going to fix that i may need a replacement part we'll see and the rear suspension's okay and the bonnet slides out backwards the boot lid just comes off no problem apart from the missing bucket seat the interior is not too bad we'll just give it a good clean up that sticker on the console, I haven't seen that available as a reproduction. There's nothing wrong with this one, we just don't want to wreck it while I'm cleaning it. Now my favourite bit, but holy hell, the paint came off this car so easy, it, I couldn't believe it. I was given the base a spray with uh, Tamiya Haze Grey, it's called. It's a pretty close match for that Corgi Grey base. Now, I got my replacement windscreen from Recover Toy today. It's a little bit thicker than the original, but uh, it's pretty good. 
I'm going to use that as a uh, guide for reshaping the um, pillars and where they should go. And hopefully we can get them nice and straight. So here we are. Jeez, I was terrified I was going to break this. It was just going to completely destroy the project, but we got there okay. So after some bulk fiddle flipping around uh, with the araldite and the baking soda, I've glued the front pillars in place and then I'll use, when they're solid, I'll uh, get the rear pillars into shape. Now we're gonna need a little bit of clean up here, of course. Uh, it's pretty solid. I'm not gonna pretend that if you, you couldn't pop back off with your hands if you forced it, but it's not gonna see the sand pit anymore. It's, now it's, it was like that for as long as I could remember. And it's, while I'm not gonna give all my secrets away, it had been in that condition for at least 40 years. Um, so for the first time in 40 years, it's back in one piece. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty pleased with how it's progressing. Now I found some JA Green, it's called Tamiya Paints, like a green gray, it was pretty close. Uh, I mixed in some metal flake uh, with it to give it that bit of a shine sparkle that the original paint had. And uh, I was quite pleased with the result. These things were going so well and then I did this. Uh, and I've edited it so you don't hear the language I used. I don't know how to bleep it out, so I've just recorded over the top. Anyway, I fixed it. Now, I lucked onto this junker from eBay in the UK. Uh, as you can see, it's still got its buckets and it's got the rear bumper. And the front suspension seems to be okay in it. It normally breaks a lot in these cars. You know how I know that? Well, after I waited for this to arrive in the mail, literally the night before it turned up, I was reminded by my father-in-law that he'd give me a box of spare parts and if I have a look inside it, I might just find a few things. And here's what I found. That's right, viewers. Not one, not two, but three other gear Chryslers with enough parts to make at least two decent ones. Oh, I really am simple some days. But on the upside, I've got two cream buckets to replace the two in Uncle Phil's. The other one was a bit wonky as well, if you remember. So it's not all bad. Now I did use that busted up, repainted one for the suspension parts and the rear bumper. Uh, I re-chromed the rear bumper and the front bumper. I won't punish you with the footage of that. Now I'm gonna try and get this thing back together. So here's a reminder of what we started with. Uh, broken front suspension, a roof that was completely 
separate from the rest of the vehicle. Missing rear bumper and the other pieces inside. The actual paint itself wasn't that bad, but of course after we repaired the roof, it needed to be re-sprayed. And you can see the doors in the bonnet actually look like they're a different color. And here is what we are left with now. Now as you can see, it doesn't look that radical a transformation. And if you hadn't seen the repair work that was involved here, you could be forgiven for thinking we'd just given it a coat of paint and uh, replaced the missing parts. But there was a little bit more involved this time. And I think the paint came out particularly close to original. Uh, and I'm really, really pleased with the result. I hope Uncle Phil would be pleased with the result. I'm sure he would. Yeah. Here's that page from the 1965 catalogue. Brought to life. <laughs> Uncle Phil had all three of them, of course, and now they're all back together again. So if you've enjoyed this video, why not give it a like, a thumbs up, a share it and subscribe it if you think other people might enjoy it or you'd like to see more of my videos. Uh, leave me some comments and tell me what you think what you thought or what you might like to see in my videos. And thanks for watching. I will see you next time on PB's Retro Restoration. Oh.